And in this work example, we're gonna be studying a little bit with electric fields and uh, an electric field is defined as a region of space where a charge experiences a force. And so to calculate the strength of the field or to define the electric field strength, we think about it as the force per unit positive charge, the force per charge. It's really important that you sort of, you know, write that out in your own words and include the word positive because that sets the direction of the electric field. And so here we've got a source of voltage. Here's the positive and negative terminals. And so like the electrons would pile up on this plate. So we can kind of think about this as the negative plate. This is the positive plate. And so it'd be some electric field lines that we could sort of draw between here just to kind of visualize this. And because it's defined as force per unit positive charge, we think about, well, how would a positive test charge sort of move inside of this field, like a proton? For a proton were in here, it would be repelled by this positive charge and it would move down. And so that's the direction of the field. We can show it moving down like this. And so it makes perfect sense that an electron, which we know is negatively charged, is gonna move the opposite way, right? So as it enters this field at a tremendous velocity, 3.7 by 10 to the seven meters per second, it's experiencing a force and that force changes its trajectory. We can anticipate that we'll have to calculate this, this value y here, which is like the distance from this plate. They, they show us that the, that the electron enters like midway through the field, right? There's two centimeters above and below it. We're probably gonna have to know the strength of this field too. And in fact, I know that we are gonna have to calculate that. So let's sort of think about there, there's an equivalent way to think about force per charge and we kind of worked through it the other day. We said voltage per distance is another way to think about electric field strength. And we're given enough information, the voltage and the total distance between the plates to calculate it that way. Then we'd be able to sort of use this equation to solve for the force. If you don't know what the charge is on an electron, it's equal to elementary charge. And if you're sitting for you know, an ACE physics paper two, you can rely on a list of formula and data. And in the list of data, you can see right here, it says elementary charge E equals 1.6 by 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. And so that number, you know, you don't have to commit it to memory, but by the time you're sitting for paper two, you probably won't have it memorized. Let's line this back up. Perfect. Perfect. That's going to bother everyone. All right, good enough. All right, so let's go ahead and apply that definition and calculate the electric field strength. I, I think some of you sort of probably beat me to it. Don't get tripped up on the kilo, right? 2.5 kilovolts. And so if we say, all right, the electric field strength E in between these plates is equal to voltage per distance, the voltage is 2.5 and kilo is 10 to the 3. All right, so just convert it like that. Kilo means thousand. So that's the voltage over the total distance, 0 0.04 meters. Remember that we took some time yesterday to show that a Newton per Coulomb, right? These units of force per charge are equal to volts per meter, right? And that's just by saying, okay, a volt is a joule per Coulomb and a joule is a Newton meter. We have a Newton meter per Coulomb per meter, right? And it cancels out to give us Newton per Coulomb. So those, those are the same. We must have the denominator here in meters, not centimeters. And so what is 2,500 divided by 400? You're allowed to use a calculator, but I'll just go ahead and do it in my head. Uh, 62,500, you getting that in the calculator? Good, good, yes. That's what my calculator says too. I mean, that's what my brain cut off. Me as I did it. Uh, Newtons per coulomb, right? That's the force per charge or the, the volts per meter. So that's how strong this field is. For each coulomb of charge, that's the amount of force that would be experienced. Now, the charge on an electron, elementary charge, is not anywhere close to one coulomb, right? A coulomb is a lot of charge. So the charge on an electron, the Q sub E, if you will, remember is 1.6 by 10 to the negative 19 coulomb. That's elementary charge. It's the same thing as the charge on a proton too. They're equal and opposite. All right, 
So I think that's actually the second thing that we needed to calculate. The first thing was the time that it takes this to move from A to B. So if we kind of look ahead of the paper here, let's calculate the time taken for the electron to move, and then it says calculate the magnitude of the electric field time. We already took care of uh, part two there, but how could we solve for the time that it takes the electron to move from A to B? Anybody know? So we don't want to overcomplicate the physics when it's simple. The velocity in the horizontal direction, there's nothing to change it. Okay. So it's it's being affected by a uniform electric field in the same way that we studied projectile motion, a massive object moving through a gravity field. Remember, it's analogous to a charge moving through an electric field. You just have this situation where, oh, the charges can be repelled, right? Like this electron is repelled by this negative plate, so it arcs upward, the parabola arcs that way. Okay. So that's sort of a, a powerful analogy that we can draw there, but only gravity only affects massive things in the vertical direction, right? So when we applied the equations of uniformly accelerated motion with projectiles, it was only in the y direction. We said, what was the, the equation for range? Range was just distance equals rate times time, right? Like it's just a definition of velocity. So we'd say, okay, velocity is what? It's distance divided by time. The distance when we did you know, projectile motion in the x direction, right? That distance was called range. And it's like, oh yeah, range equals Vxt. And we just multiply those sides by t. That was our range equation. This comes from, hey, no acceleration needed. We're, we're just in the horizontal direction. So two here, we can solve for the time. You do the old algebra switcheroo. T equals d over v, right? The distance divided by the velocity gets you the time. Miami's 200 miles away. You drive 200 miles an hour, and you're there in an hour. That's a fun weekend. I'll edit that out of YouTube later. All right, so the distance here uh, is this, 5.9 centimeters. Let's change it, 0 0.059 meters, shall we? Good. And then this is in meters per second, right? So the velocity is just, oh, 10% the speed of light. Meters per second, right? The meters are going to cancel, and we'll be in seconds. And so, oh. Pencil math? Yeah, why not? I'll go ahead and do this one in my head too. It'll take me just a second to think through it here. So you, you guys use a calculator. That's fine. You know, you get one on the test, and so you should practice using it. You don't want to make a mistake with your mental math. All right, let me just push the button wrong. Remember that when you divide um, mentally in your brain or on a calculator and you're dividing by something in scientific notation, it's so important to use grouping symbols because you want to divide by that big number. You don't want to divide by 3.7 and then multiply by 10 million, which is what your calculator will do rigidly following the order of operations, right? It knows to multiply and divide from left to right in the order that you tell it to. So you got to say, oh, evaluate this first. I want you to, you know, I want to divide by this quantity. I want you to multiply this before you do the division. So your answer should be really, really small. And, and, and again, that passes the common sense test of how long would it take an electron going 10% the speed of light to go a few centimeters, right? A very short amount of time is what you, your sort of reasoning should lead you to. So if you get an answer that's like a huge amount of seconds, you probably multiply by 10 million and you're off by many orders of magnitude. Anybody solve it um, in their head? No? I got uh, like 1.594594 repeating by 10 to the negative nine mentally, but maybe you got the same thing in your calculator or my off by decimal point. Jacob, what did you get? So I think if uh, 10 to the negative eight, now check it again. So we did 0 0.059 divided by 3.7 by 10 to the seven. Sometimes like my calculator, and I think I can show this maybe to do this in class right now, but it might not, it's not gonna show up for the, like my calculator shows me this answer when I first evaluate it. Look at this key, F to E. There's like hidden decimal points there, okay? So it's, it just says, oh, it's so low. It's like point is a one, but like, no, I need all those digits. So look for that key, like something's round, like it rounded it to there. When I typed in my calculator and hit equals, that's the answer I got. And I'm like, that can't, you know, there's gotta be more digits there. 
And so expressive exponential notation, scientific notation. So that's the answer you should get. Anybody else getting that? I mean, I first I did it in my head, you guys, and then I typed it in the calculator to check, you know, to check your answer. That's tough mental math. You know, I don't expect everybody to do that. YouTube's like, what are you talking about? Yeah, 1.59 by 10 to the negative 9. Anybody else getting that? You should. If you're not, you know, check in your calculator. Now's the time to make the mistake and call me over there and say, I, no matter what I type in, I can't get that answer. Show me what I'm doing wrong here. And I'll tell you, nine times out of 10, you have not used grouping symbols if you're getting the answer. It's like really big. So it's 1.59 by 10 to the negative 9 seconds, right? Because we did meters per second of velocity. I just think it's so much nicer to write it like nanoseconds. All right, 1.6 nanoseconds, 10 to the negative 9 being nano. So that's a good reminder, like, oh yeah, that, that sort of conversion works both ways. So much cleaner to write it like that, in my opinion. But your calculator kind of understands this better. Right? So you as a human being can kind of convert it back. So it takes 1.6 nanoseconds, 1.6 billionths of a second for the electron to go from A to B. All right. It, it then asks us to calculate the acceleration on this charge here. So we know enough to calculate the force, okay, because we know the voltage per distance or the electric field strength. And we know that the electric field strength is also equal to force per charge. The charge is this. It's not friendly enough to remind you, hey, here's an electron with, with that you should know the charge of this elementary charge. You don't have to memorize. Remember, I showed you that it's on the list of data. So we're going to calculate the force. Another thing on that list of data, and I could scroll back up and, and show it to you, is the mass of an electron. You know how mass of an electron is? And it's equal to 9.11 by 10 to the negative 31 kilograms. And so once we know the force, it's, it's just F equals MA. All right, and then we know the mass, and we can calculate the acceleration. The paper tells us that we should expect to get 1.1 by 10 to the 16 meters per second squared. It's a show that the acceleration is this. This electron can enter this field. And remember, it's only being accelerated in the direction the field acts vertically. One calculation leads to the next. This is what's going to allow us to calculate the displacement here. Why? The distance from this plate to this point B. Because we'll know how much it's accelerating. We know its initial conditions. We can use kinematics to solve it. Because it's a uniform electric field. The physics is the same for a uniform gravity field for massive objects. That's the projectile motion we've already studied. It's just, oh, it goes up instead of down. Right, not too bad. All right, so let's jump right in there. Get rid of all that. All right, we, we saw for the time. That's one of the things we had to do. All right, let's figure out the force here. So we know that the electric field is equal to 62,500. Newtons per Coulomb, and that's equal to the force per charge. So if I multiply both sides by the charge, Q, then I'd have the Coulombs cancel out, and I just have the Newtons of force. And so the charge Q is this. And so the calculation becomes the force is equal to um, the field strength times Q, and that's 62,500. Let me rewrite it like this. 62,500 is E, Q is per Coulomb. Q is 1.6 by 10 to the negative 19 Coulombs. Really important number, elementary charge. The Coulombs cancel. And what does that work out to be? I'll go ahead and retire the bad joke of me doing this all mentally. I know it wasn't funny the first time. All right, so I'm getting a force uh, one by 10 to the negative 14 newtons. Okay, so if you type that in your calculator, you should get this. And then it's, we want to show that the acceleration is this. And so force equals mass times acceleration. That's not defining electric field strength, right? That's a few second law right here. Just doing my working up here. You guys can show it more cleanly in your journal there. All right, so we want to show the acceleration is something. So it's the force over the mass. If you look on the chalkboard, you can see, oh yeah, that's how we define gravitational field strength, right? The acceleration of gravity, the newtons of force per kilogram of mass. 
we were making an analogy between electric fields and gravity fields, the same way that we're studying these charges moving in electric fields, you know, massive things moving in gravity fields. So here we're using the same physics. We got one by 10 to the 14, sorry, negative 14 Newtons over the mass, 9.11 by 10 to the negative 31 kilograms. A newton per kilogram is the same thing as a meter per second squared. And so when you negative 14 um, minus negative 31, that's plus positive, right? And so 14 31 minus 14 is 17. So yeah, if you typed in your calculator, I'm sure it would give you this. It's about right, right? You can kind of give it a rough calculation by saying negative 14 minus negative 31 gets you about the right order of magnitude. So one times 10 raised to the negative 14 divided by 9.11 by 10 to the negative 31. And you do, you get 1.09 by 10, whoops, 1.09 by 10 to the 16. And so that's about 1.1 by 10 to the 16. All right, so how are we going to solve for y here? We're going to need to solve for the displacement. Now, we're lucky that we know the time that this thing is acting on it. So they already had us calculate the time that it's in this field. We know the acceleration, and then we want to know the, the sort of the distance here. So we could use maybe the distance equals one half the, well, we don't know the final velocity, do we? So we wouldn't want to use that one. We actually want to use this equation. The initial velocity is zero because it's zero in the y direction. So plug in that acceleration, plug in that time, and you'll get the displacement. But what you're solving for is the displacement from here to here, right? So the final step to calculate y is going to be to take the answer you get for this displacement and subtract it away from two. And that's the step that many students are going to sort of miss. They're going to solve for the displacement and report that as their final answer. If you do it correctly, you should get that there's 1.4 centimeters of displacement this way. And you solve for that. You plug in this for A and this for T, which means the final answer for Y is 0.6 centimeters. That's already put away your journal and you don't have the final answer in this place. Some students are like, oh, I'll take a picture of it, I'll copy it later, I'll work through this. Or just check it out on YouTube. This has been another working sample with Dr. Schleif, and we'll see you next time.